Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make what I'm going to call a bubble scarf. Most scarves seem to be even knitted or if they're sewn they're quite flat so I decided I wanted to try to add a bit of dimension to a scarf instead. So this design I'm going to show you is extremely warm and cosy and it's made basically of stuffed pockets. There's cylinder shapes all the way around that are filled with polyester stuffing and then there's an overlapping padded section. To make this scarf you're going to need some fabric. One of the fabrics I used was a light grey sweatshirt like knit material that's fairly thick, it's a little bit stretchy and it's soft and fleecy on the inside. The other fabric was a thinner dark grey fine jersey material again with a very slight stretch. Please note that the stretchier the fabric the harder it will be to work with so try and choose a fabric with only a little stretch to them. Also make sure that it's not too loosely knit or too thin because we're going to be putting white stuffing behind this fabric and obviously you don't want the stuffing to be visible through the fabric. You'll also need a sewing machine and this needs to be threaded with either a matching thread or a contrast thread. I've personally gone for a red thread which contrasts with the grey material so that it's just easier for you to see. You'll also need some kind of fastening so that the scarf will stay in place around your neck and I'm personally going to use snap fastenings to do this. Other options include buttons, velcro or even a decorative brooch. If you're going to be hand sewing these fastenings onto your scarf you're also going to need a needle and thread. To stuff the scarf and make it nice and warm you're going to need some stuffing and also some batting or wadding. I went for polyester stuffing that's used to stuff toys and I used the thick polyester wadding that's normally used in quilts. You'll only need a small amount of these items. You're also going to need the usual things that you need for sewing. For instance, an iron and ironing board, some sewing pins, a rotary cutter and cutting mat preferably, or you can use fabric scissors, a metal ruler, or preferably two metal rulers, one 30 centimetres long and one a metre long, some scissors, and also either a disappearing fabric pen or a chalk marker. If you're using a light coloured material, a disappearing fabric pen is best, but if you're using a dark material, a chalk marker is best. Okay, so let's get on with making this scarf. Please note that I'm going to show you how to make the exact same scarf that I made, to my dimensions. This size should fit most people, but please feel free to change the dimensions or even the design according to your preferences. What I did first was take the light grey fabric which is going to be the back or inside of my scarf and I cut out a piece that measured 26.5 inches by 6.5 inches. I arrived at this length by placing a tape measure around my neck the same as how I would wear this scarf and adding that measurement to 0.5 inches plus the number of inches I wanted the scarf to overlap by. The height of the scarf is literally how high you want the scarf to sit, bearing in mind that it's padded and so will sit upright, and then add another half an inch. I then took my dark grey jersey fabric, which is going to be the front or the outside of the scarf, and I cut a piece that measured 32 inches by 6.5 inches. So this piece is the same width as the inside piece, but it's longer. This is because the front piece of fabric will be ruffled or pleated and will therefore end up the same size as the back piece of fabric by the end. Once I'd cut the two pieces out I place the front fabric which is the dark grey fabric on top of the back fabric so that the pieces lined up along both long edges and along one of the short edges. You want to place the fabrics right sides together. I personally want the fleecy side of my sweatshirt fabric to be on the outside of the final scarf. 
So I've placed that sweatshirt fabric with the fleecy side up. And the dark grey jersey I'm using doesn't have a right side, so it doesn't matter which way up I place it. We're now going to add pleats to the front fabric, which in my case is the dark grey fabric. You need to measure 1.5 inches from the end of the scarf where the fabrics are lined up and make a mark with either a disappearing fabric pen or a chalk marker. Then draw a little line quarter of an inch either side of this mark. And these extra lines will just be a helpful guide. You then pinch together the edge of the top fabric so that the fabric folds along the central line that you have drawn. You then fold over this section of fabric that you've pinched together along the line to the left of the central mark. So basically this peak of fabric now points towards the nearest end of the scarf. Make sure the pleat lies parallel to the short end of the scarf and then pin it in place. You want to pin this pleat onto the fabric underneath. Bear in mind that during this process only the top piece of fabric is going to have pleats added to it. So the piece of fabric underneath just stays flat. So what this process should create is a pleat which measures quarter of an inch across and removes a total of half an inch from the length of the fabric. You then simply repeat this again. But from now on, we're going to be placing the pleats two inches apart. So that's two inches to the right from the folds of the last pleat you made and draw a line with a fabric pen or a chalk marker. And then draw a line quarter of an inch either side of this mark. Pinch the fabric edge together along this central line. Fold over a quarter of an inch to the left and then pin it down onto the fabric underneath. I made a total of 11 pleats along this side of the fabric edge. Once you've finished those pleats, it's now time to pleat the other side of the top fabric. You do this in exactly the same way and you want to make another 11 pleats. You'll know you've done this right if the pleats line up and are at exactly the same positions along each of the long edges. The folds in the fabric between the pleats therefore should be parallel to the short edge of the scarf. Once you've finished, the other short end of the two fabrics should now roughly meet up, or thereabouts. The ends of my fabrics were a little distance apart, so to make sure they lined up perfectly, I took a metal ruler, a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, and I cut those ends of the fabric off so that they now lined up perfectly. Make sure that when you do this, you cut the fabrics nice and square and make sure that you cut off the least amount of fabric you can. I personally just had to cut a thin strip off the light gray fabric underneath. Now that the pleats have all been pinned in place, it's time to sew all the way along both of the long edges. But first make sure that you've pinned all the way along including in the unpleated section. The best way to sew this scarf is to sew from the unpleated end first. This will mean that you definitely avoid catching the pleats in your presser foot. The type of stitch I used was the three-step zigzag stitch, as I like the look of it and it's also good for knit or stretch fabrics. 
I also used a ballpoint needle in my sewing machine since I'm sewing with knit fabrics. All you need to do is start at one end and stitch in a straight line all the way along both of the long edges. Remembering to do a reinforcement or backward stitch at the beginning and end to secure the thread. Also make sure that you remove the sewing pins as you go so that you don't sew over them by accident. I used a seam allowance of half an inch. What you'll end up with is a kind of ruffled pleated tube and now you need to turn it right sides out. You then need to use an iron to flatten the pleats and the edges to make the scarf a lot easier to handle. I also laid the pleats out flat as shown in the photo just to make the next steps a bit easier. Don't be tempted to miss the ironing part out because it really makes it look a whole lot neater. Next I used my chalk marker to draw a line at the pleated end of the fabric tube, half an inch from the edge. I pinned the edges together and then stitched along the line using a stretch stitch. I don't know why I left the raw edges visible but please learn from my mistake and turn in the raw edges before sewing in order to make a much nicer finish. The next step is to add the stuffing to the scarf. In this photo you can see the polyester stuffing that I'm going to use and I've also, mainly for demonstration purposes, marked in chalk the halfway points between the pleats. These are the points between which we will now be sewing. So first take a small amount of the stuffing and push it into the fabric tube so that it goes right to the bottom. The idea is to add enough to fill out the first pleats in the scarf and create a sort of cylinder shape. You don't want to overstuff it because then it'll be difficult to sew next to. However, you also don't want to underfill the scarf as then it'll look a bit baggy and limp. You then need to add sewing pins next to this stuffed section in a straight line, with the start and the end of this line being approximately halfway between the first and the second pleats, i.e. where I've made a chalk mark. You then need to top stitch along this line so that you sew across the scarf making sure not to sew over the sewing pins. There is an element of freehand sewing at this point to be honest, but just try and keep sewing in a straight line and try to make all of your stitched lines parallel. And then you just repeat the same thing for each of the 11 pleats and this will give you a squishy and cozy scarf. So you take more stuffing and you push it to the bottom of the scarf trying to make a kind of even cylinder shape across the scarf. Then you pin halfway between the second and third pleats this time and then sew straight across, trying to keep the line as parallel as possible. And so on until you finish stuffing all of these pockets. Once that's done, we just need to pad the unpleated section of the scarf. To do this, I cut out a section of wadding that's just slightly smaller than the unpleated area of the scarf. Insert the wadding into this section of the tube and pin the end closed, making sure to turn the raw edges inwards first. I then sewed along this edge using a stretch stitch. And now the scarf is basically finished. All you need to do now is add your fastening of choice. I personally just hand sewed a few snap fastenings onto my scarf using the whip stitch. In order to know where you want the fastenings, 
Just put the scarf around your neck, how you would want to wear it, and that will show you exactly where you want it fastening. I have to say that having the fleecy side of the sweatshirt fabric on the inside and having the scarf totally padded makes it really, really warm and cosy. Plus, when the wind is icy, you can pull it further up over your face really easily. I really hope you've enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.